Today we're reading The Little yeah. Mermaid. Uh, yeah. Her. Mm. Get back here! Get back here! So I'll be reading. I'll be doing the reading, and then Miss Bubba Cheeks here is going to be doing the interpretation. Uh, Hannah, where can you go, Hannah Bear? Okay, ready? Yeah. King Triton, the great sea king, had many daughters who loved the underworld sea. But Triton's youngest daughter, Ariel, dreamed of a world above the water surface, the world of humans. Ariel and her friend Flounder liked to go to the surface to visit Scuttle the seagull. Scuttle told them all about the humans, humans objects that Ariel found at the bottom of the sea. One day, Triton learned about Ariel's trips to the surface. The sea king grew very angry. He asked his friend Sebastian the crab to keep an eye on Ariel. Aww. A few days later, a few days later, Ariel noticed a ship sailing away. Okay, there's the ship. Yeah, yeah. Okay, calm down. <laughs> Away on the surface of the water, she quickly swam towards it. You guys like towards the ship? Oh, and I got caught. <laughs> Ariel, Ariel, come back! Cried Sebastian as he and Flounder swam after after her. Oh no, do you have a Flounder? Well, I have green and brown. Okay. Um, when Ariel surfaced, she saw a huge ship filled with sailors. Ooh, coming off the surface. Ariel's eyes lit up with a spotted sailor. Or when she spotted the sailor, the others called Prince Eric. You have to say, oh my goodness, I love him. No, you have to do your aerial voice, because you are holding her. It was love at first sight. Like this? Mm-hmm. It won't work. Okay. Suddenly, the sky darkened. Heavy rain began to fall. The lightning split the sky. <laughs> the ship was tossed on the waves, and the prince was thrown overboard. <laughs> oh no. Oh, my hair. My hair's caught. I'm going to My ratchet hair. <laughs> I've got to save him, thought Ariel. Mm. You gotta save him. She grabbed the drowning prince and swam to the shore, pulling him onto the beach. Prince Eric did not stir at, as Ariel gently touched his face and sang him a love song. Let's sing. I don't know where, I don't know how, but I know something starting right now. Soon Ariel heard the prince's crew searching for him. He did not want to be seen, but she did not want to be seen by humans. So she kissed the prince and dove back into the sea. She can kiss me now. Dive. Ugh. Ooh, she's swimming now. Prince Eric awoke to find Sir Gins- Grinsby, his loyal sword. Or is Mr. Grinsby? You don't have any? Uh, was happy that Eric was alive. A girl rescued me, said the prince. She was singing. She had the most beautiful voice. Prince Eric too. Prince Eric too had fallen in love. <laughs> King Triton was furious when he discovered that Ariel had fallen in love with a human. He rushed to the grotto where Ariel kept her collection of human treasures. <gasps> contact between oh, <clears throat> contact between the human world and the mer- mer- world is strictly forbidden. Shouted, uh, Triton shouted. He raised his magic trident and fire bolts at energy of energy around the cave, destroying the treasures in the mighty sea king left. Ariel buried her face in her hands and began to cry. <gasps> she was crying. <laughs> Father never understands. <laughs> Ready? We're just going to sing. Um, what's that song again that she sings? The Little Mermaid song. Meanwhile, not far away, evil forces were at work in the undersea kingdom. Ursula, the sea witch, who had tried once before to overthrow Triton, was looking for a way to take over. Through her crystal ball, she could see Ariel crying, and the idea came to her. Too bad we don't have her. No. Okay. Um, Ursula sent her slimy eel servants, Flotsam and Jetsam, to Ariel's gro- grotto, where they, con- they there they convinced the Little Mermaid that Ursula could help her to get her beloved prince. Ariel was so upset that she ignored Sebastian's warnings and swam off with Flotsam and Jetsam to meet with the sea. We named Flotsam and Jetsam. Is that her name? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <I'm> so <itchy. laughs> My dear, said the witch. Oh, my dear, said the witch. Here's the deal. I'll make a potion that will turn you into a human and for three died. days. <laughs> Before the sun sets on the third day, you've got to get dear old Prince to kiss you. Ew. If he kisses you, you'll remain human permanently. But if he doesn't, you turn back into a mermaid and you belong to me. In return for the potion, oh, in return for the potion, the witch wanted Ariel's voice. Oh, Diana. My voice? Asked Ariel. You know my voice? How can I? You'll still have your looks, your pretty face, replied Ursula. Okay, let's just sing. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, okay, go. Sing. Uh, sing it. Uh, oh, she's here. Sing. Uh, no. Okay. After Ariel agreed to Ursula's deal, an amazing change took place. Ariel's voice flew from her body and was captured in a seashell around Ursula's neck. Ariel lost her tail, grew legs, and became a human. Um, where is that? Where's my... Okay, okay, let's go get it. Bye, guys. So, oh, yeah. I'll be back in just a second. I'll be... I'll find it. Okay, she's like, yeah. Wait, um, just a second. That's the room. Okay, let's go. So she's a human now. When Ariel went in search for the prince, she was helped ashore by her friends. She tried to speak to them, but no sound came out. Let me show her voice. A short while later, Ariel saw Prince Eric. The prince had been lovesick ever since hearing her sing. At first, the prince thought Ariel was the girl who had rescued him. But when he learned that she couldn't speak, he knew he was wrong. Uh-huh. Prince Eric felt sorry for Ariel. She needed a place to stay, so he took her back to his place. 
Over the next few days, Prince Eric grew to like Ariel more and more. During a romantic boat ride, Eric was about to kiss Ariel when Flotsam and Jetsam overturned the boat. Shy and many my oh my, don't be shy and uh, kiss the girl. Here, yeah, is that how it goes? Yeah. Oh, you have to sing with me. No! Oh, all right. <clears throat> that was a close one, too close, said Ursula, who was watching in her crystal ball. And then we fell. get off the boat. It's time Ursula took matters to her own tentative. The sea witch mixed the ma a magic potion and changed herself into a beautiful young maiden. On the morning of the third day, there was great excitement throughout the kingdom. Prince Eric was going to marry a young maiden he had just met. Ursula, disguised as a maiden, had used Ariel's voice to trick Prince Eric. He now believed that the maiden was a girl who had saved him from the shipwreck. Just like poor Ariel. Poor Ariel was so heartbroken. The wedding ceremony was about to take place on the prince, princess, on the on Prince Eric's boat. Scuttle flew, flew by just as the bride. Oh, yeah. She was seen from the bed. Scuttle flew by just as the bride passed in front of the mirror. Her reflection was that of the sea witch. Scuttle rushed off, rushed off to tell Ariel and the rest of his friends. Sebastian quickly formed a plan. Flounder helped Ariel get out to ship to Eric's ship. Scuttle arranged for some of his single friends to delay the wedding, and Sebastian hurried to see to find King's Brighton. And then he became a mermaid. Hold on. Prince Eric and the maiden were about to be married when a flock of seagulls. Okay, where's Scuttle? Yeah. How about you run in the sun? Okay. When a flock of seagulls led by Scuttle swooped down on the bride, she screamed in the sea witch's voice. Scuttle knocked the seashell containing Ariel's voice from around the maiden's neck. The shell shattered and Ariel's voice was returned again. Ah, 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 ah. It was all time. It was you all the time, said Prince Eric. Oh, Eric, I wanted to tell you, said Ariel. The sun disappeared over the horizon just as they were about to kiss. Ariel, three days were up. She changed back into a mermaid. Ursula grabbed her Ariel and dove off the ship. Oh no, now she's back into a mermaid again. <laughs> Thanks to Sebastian's warning, Triton was waiting for them at Ursula's lair. I might be willing to make an exchange for something better, cried Ursula. Triton agreed, and he became Ursula's prisoner. Just pretend we're animals. She now, has my, uh, he, she now had his magic trident and control of the undersea kingdom. All of a sudden, a harpoon struck Ursula in the shoulder. Prince Eric had come to Ariel's rescue. Together, they swam to the surface. Okay. Ursula followed close behind them, and she grew bigger and bigger and with anger until she rose out of the water. Okay. Prince Eric swam to his ship and climbed on board. He grabbed the wheel and turned the ship towards Ursula. Just as the sea witch was about to fire a deadly bolt at Ariel from the trident, the prince's ship slammed into Ursula. The evil witch was destroyed. <gasps> now that the witch was gone, Triton was freed. He rose from the sea and saw Ariel watching Prince Eric, who was laying on the shore unconscious. Okay. She really does love him, doesn't she? asked the sea king. Sebastian, who was near nearby, nodded. I'm going to miss her, Triton added. Then he raised his trident and shot a magic bolt at Ariel's tail. The little mermaid's tail disappeared. Oh, she's back to the normal tail. And once again, she had legs. Ariel was now a human. Prince Eric awoke in time to see his beloved Ariel running onto the shore. He kissed her and they were married that day. After the wedding, Prince Eric and Ariel sailed off on their honeymoon to live happily ever after. What is she doing this place? 